Samsung's QD OLED technology has been winning awards left and right, including here on our own channel, where we gushed over it so hard when we first saw it that we put this in the title as a joke and then gushed about it some more. My name is Ploof and I have an AW3423DW at home. The Alienware QD OLED I have, the AW3423DW. But then, a few months ago, disaster struck. Ratings image retention testing found that despite Samsung's claims to the contrary, not only did QD OLED suffer burn-in, it was worse than conventional OLED technologies, which is a super weird thing to point out 30 seconds into a video that is sponsored by Samsung Display this time. That is, unless it turned out that everything was actually fine and Samsung's confidence in the technology has been entirely warranted. And they are confident. Not only did they not bother to send over pretty much any sponsored talking points, they gave us carte blanche to run any tests we wanted on the new generation QD OLED displays under this sheet. Ah! So we did. And these things are wild. Brandon, our display expert from the lab, described them as basically perfect in every way. I am talking near reference monitor levels of color accuracy, unbeatable viewing angles, and for all you gamers out there, here's a spoiler. This is a pursuit camera shot showing motion blur on the 1440p 360 hertz panel. The motion blur. I know, right? What motion blur? Oh, yeah, and did I mention, for all the ultra-wide haters out there, that the new ones are available in a 16 by 9 aspect ratio? I freaking can't wait to game on these things. Ploof already told me he's buying one. So it's yeah. Like, got him. It's true. Keep an eye out on Facebook Marketplace for his old <laughs> alien work. <laughs>
and just overall pixel density. It all has to do with their new Pico inkjet quantum dot printing process. Remember, QD OLED technology works by using a blue self-emitting OLED layer that then shines through quantum dots to create bright and precise colors. And to achieve such a high PPI on a screen this size, they have had to make some serious changes on both the hardware and software level. Not only did they need to work with the manufacturers to retool the heads and nozzles for their printing, but the quantum dot formula itself had to change as well. For the right flow, the viscosity needs to be perfect. If it's too thick or too low pressure when you're spraying it, you can end up with issues like nozzle blockages. If it's too thin, you get suboptimal splattering. And what I mean by that is that when the droplet hits the screen layer, you want it to spread out a little bit but not too much or it's not going to stay within the subpixel area. It also has to maintain a specific thickness once it's landed for the light to pass through it correctly. Good lord, that's a lot of variables. And we're only talking about the panels today, so if you want more details on the various QD OLED monitors that are going to come out from Samsung Display's partners, you're going to have to stay tuned to our Short Circuit channel for coverage of those. But if they all perform anywhere near as well as these do, wow. This 1440p 360Hz model has some of the best HDR color accuracy that we have ever seen outside of reference monitors that typically cost tens of thousands of dollars. Speaking of, Samsung also revealed a 55-inch QD OLED reference display, the XMP550, earlier this year, and at only 20 grand, it should be way less than the previous OLED competition. As for our 4K panel, out of the box set to creator mode, our SDR accuracy was a delta E average of 0.8 with a maximum of two. In HDR set to peak 1000 mode with luminance error, we measured an average delta E of 3.8 and a maximum of 15.7. That is wild. These are also the first OLED panels to be Pantone and Pantone skin tone validated and the monitors are reaching 80% coverage of BT2020, while Samsung Display is claiming, though we haven't measured this yet, that the TVs will do an otherworldly 90%, likely thanks to their increased peak brightness of 3000 nits. One of the keys to this performance is their Quantum Enhancer, or as they refer to it, the soul of QD OLED. We don't have a ton of specifics about it, but They've used machine learning to improve the neural logic that drives the pixels, and this is a staple across all of the new panels, giving us this new level of performance, all while drawing the same amount of power and while improving longevity. Their new compensation algorithm is supposed to be one and a half times better than before in the monitors and two times better in the TVs, and even the old one was pretty good it turns out, at least when it worked. <laughs> And that ended up being a big part of what Ratings was running into when they were testing burn-in and image retention. A lot of the panels simply weren't running their proper compensation cycles and panel refreshes while the competition was. So after some firmware updates and manual cycling, the issues with the previous Gen 2 panels significantly improved. Now, we haven't done a major burn-in test under worst possible conditions, but several people here at LMG, including some who will never freaking shut up about it, <laughs> have been daily driving QD OLED panels, either as their TV or their monitor for the last year or two. Actually, that includes me. And so far, the previous generation seems completely fine in normal use. And if this latest 2024 generation really is that much stronger, I think it might finally be time to just Start enjoying this golden age of premium tier monitors. I've said it before, but I'll say it again. This is truly the new god king of display technology. And what's really cool is if you want to save a buck and buy the last generation, that's really good too. We're going to have some of the previous QD OLED monitors linked down below. For now, I get to check out the 1440p 360Hz panel that you unfortunately can't buy just yet. <laughs> Sorry. The image clarity isn't quite on par because we're running at 1440p, but at this kind of frame rate, at this kind of size, 1440p is such a sweet spot for running even modern AAA games at very smooth frame rates. Like I'm getting anywhere from 220 to 250 frames per second, and it's just, oh, the motion clarity is just unbefreaking leaveable. Don't take my word for it though, guys. We took some motion blur shots of Smooth Frog so you can see for yourself. 
That is not a picture of a still image. And if you look closely, you can see a teeny tiny bit of blur in the text above the frogs. But that is basically it. Absolutely incredible. Now let's talk about latency. The 4K panel we looked at earlier measured 2.7 milliseconds of latency at 240 Hz, and this guy is 2.1. When you consider that the theoretical perfect latency at 240 and 360 hertz is 2.1 and 1.4 respectively, that means each of these displays is adding about 0.6 and 0.7 milliseconds of processing time. Show me a human who can perceive that and I will show you a big fat faker. One thing to consider if you're thinking about the 1440p panel over the 4K is that text clarity is improved over the previous gen, but not by as much here. The new and improved subpixel layout does help, but it has the same pixel density as before, so color fringing may be noticeable if you're sensitive to it. With that said, this panel measured even better color accuracy in SDR and HDR. In SDR, we measured an average of 0.5 delta E and a max of 0.9, and in HDR, it averaged 5.2 and hit a max of 12.5 with luminance errors. That is absolutely stunning. Now, one of the challenges that Samsung Display has faced in figuring out how to market these things is that while the performance is obvious to the eye, it's difficult to explain why it's so good unless the listener happens to be familiar with the Helmholtz Kohlrausch effect, which is an explanation of how color saturation makes something appear brighter on one display compared to another one, even if they are both at the same level of luminance. Here, let me show you. These two images are the same luminance, but the colorful one obviously pops more. And while this effect has been known for a long time, it's been very difficult to measure. But Samsung Display is claiming that now it can be measured with their new XCR or Experienced Color Range testing methodology. Explaining XCR and other color appearance models like CCAM16, bit beyond the scope of this video, but we're hoping to have a tech quickie out later after speaking further with Samsung Display's experts and getting some other input since obviously Samsung Display is building this out to market their own TVs and monitors. So you can stay tuned for that. But for now, all you guys need to know is that QD OLED can deliver a brighter appearing image even at the same luminance. Sauce, my eyes. And that's the bottom line. But Samsung wanted us to throw one last little bit in here. Shout out the Nobel Prize winners who helped get us here. Uh, Drs. Mungi Bowendi, Alexei Ekimov, and Louis Bruce. Great job, everyone. Thank you so much for helping us witness some of the most amazing display technology that I've ever seen. And thanks again, Samsung Display, for making this video possible, not only by sponsoring it, but even just like getting us access to this stuff ahead of time. This is the kind of thing I love to do. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to check out our review of the 34-inch QD OLED version of this from a couple of years ago. It was already that good. And this is even better.